Welcome back. Uh, we're in uh, Santa Den today, just north of Johannesburg, and we're talking transport. And uh, I introduced our guest, the Minister and the Deputy, just before uh, we broke away, uh, but we're back now. And uh, let's start this conversation. And Minister, perhaps I can start with you. Uh, it's the launch of Transport Month. It's uh, been happening since 2005. Why do we have a Transport Month? What, what is it there to do? The intention of having Transport Month is to make sure that we can focus in profiling but also making it possible that the people of South Africa can know what it is that the government, together with different partners and stakeholders, is doing to make sure that they can, we can move South Africa forward. The intention of Transport Month is to make it possible that we educate, create awareness, but also look at the areas where we need to intervene. But it's also in a platform to literally show the people of South Africa, like I said earlier on, what it is that we have done. And I want to say that in this year, because it's 20 years of a democratic, non-racial South Africa, we say we continue with a good story. With, for example, the interventions that government has done over the years in the transport sector, in public transport in particular, you would know the investment that we've done with the BRT, which is the bus rapid transit system. You would know what is happening with my city in Cape Town, as well as what is happening here in Gauteng with Ria Via. And very soon we will be launching Arieng in Tswane. But we also know that there are another 12 or so municipalities that are investing in planning for additional work around the, the BRT system. But also to show that the government of the African National Congress, led by President Zuma, does put emphasis on public transport, you'd have realized the investment that have been put with regard to PRASA, the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, with Metro Rail, the 53 billion rand investment that was done very early in this year that is going to lead to building a factory to make the trains in South Africa, but also to make sure that we create the necessary skills and create industries supporting the rail uh, uh, passenger services. You have heard what the chairperson of Trans that have indicated about the 316 billion rand of investment for the freight sector. But also one of the key things that we are focusing on is to use this month in particular, although we do it on a daily basis, to talk more about road safety, to talk more about what we're doing to make sure that our people could be even more safer, like for example, our learner transport policy that we will be in this month taking before cabinet, but also the, 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 the different interventions in terms of road infrastructure, in particular in the rural areas. And I would want to say today we know that we've got learners in South Africa, like from, for example in Msinga, who cannot go to school when the streams and rivers are flooded because there's no way of crossing. They will be eaten up by the crocodiles. And those things actually speak to the road infrastructure funding initiatives that we, or a, a model that we are working on. So there's a lot of activities that we have been working on. And this month, it is actually a month to speak more a month to inform the community, a month to work together with partners to showcase that which we are not doing. But I also want to say, this is also the month where myself and the Deputy Minister would be showcasing that it is a tough battle in the transport sector to ensure gender equity. I'm sure you see in the audience here that we've got a struggle. The bulk of the people here are male, and we have to change that picture because the president has already, at leadership level, changed this, the picture. But it's also to make sure that our services can respond to the needs of women, to the needs of children, and to the needs of people with disabilities. So we're saying in this month, each and every role player, is it a private individual, is it government uh, through provinces and municipalities, we are showcasing that we are, which we are doing to expand further on the, 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 the good story to move South Africa forward. Fantastic. Uh, Deputy Minister, uh, this Transport Month is falling in the same sort of time period as uh, this UN Decade for Action for Road Safety. And we started touching on it uh, 2011 to 2020. And it is a big issue uh, in South Africa. I think when you hear the statistics that uh, earlier on we just heard 14,000 people uh, died on our roads. 
What would you want to say to our public and the users of uh, transport, in one form or another, about road safety? Because that's a really, really big issue, I think, uh, because lives are lost and it is costing us billions in the process. What would you want to say? No, I think, Peter, the, the issue about road transport uh, safety, in fact, road safety, is with regards to our attitude. We have got the laws. Mm. We train people before they acquire their uh, licenses. And, and, and they know what is right and what is wrong. It's only the attitude that we need to change. And once we do that, we will be safe on our roads. But Peter, it's not only about road safety, and I think you'll want us to discuss more on that one, but we also look at rail safety. Mm -hmm. We also, as the Department of Transport, looking at the civil aviation safety, also maritime safety and security for that matter. So we have all these issues that, as the Department of Transport, were expected to take care of, mm -hmm. and we also are ensuring that we are safe. We're doing very well in other areas, for instance, which we talk about uh, aviation safety and security, for instance. For instance, South Africa has a, 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 a rate of 3.3% on air crashes, and the world is at 53.053%, and South Africa is at not percent. And we've been keeping this record for quite a long time. This is aviation, and we're happy to say that good as we're saying this, we're worried about our uh, uh, general aviation. We're talking about small aircrafts here in the country. Even if there has been an, a decrease from 2006, from 176 to 22 to date, but we think even that 22 is quite a worrying factor. What it actually means is that each year we've been decreasing by 8% from 176 to where we are today. But we want to see even a, a, a decrease, I mean, us decreasing even more to even not percent, because we can't do that. And we have our entities that are taking care of that. We have put in place strategies to correct that, because it can be corrected. If we're able to have a record of 0% at international level, level, that is with our commercial aircrafts, we can do it even with our small aircrafts here in the country. And that is at civil aviation level, but we also have maritime as well. We are responsible for the safety of all ships in the oceans, mm. be they, I mean, major ones or bigger ones or smaller ones, but we are responsible for that. And I think as a country, we are doing very well. And therefore, mm. as the minister is saying, we are also here to showcase that which we are doing, but also to tell a good story that we, I believe we have as the Department of Transport and thanks to the leadership of the minister. All right, so I'm gonna harp on a little bit about road safety because, uh, you know, as a journalist, we tell these stories almost every single day, sadly. Uh, and, and Minister, you, you started saying attitude needs to change. Uh, what else can we do? Or how can we change that attitude? Because I think left to their own devices, human beings are not hearing that message and they're not changing it. How do we encourage them? And what other interventions can there be to make our roads safer? Our interventions are centered around the three E's. The first E is law enforcement. But we have also realized that we need to make sure that we increase the law enforcement uh, cadership that we have. For the more than 10.5 million vehicles on our roads, we've got about 17,000 traffic officers on this road, taking from municipality to national. We're starting with effect from next year to train 1,300 traffic officers so as to be able to increase them. But it's just not the training that we are focusing on to make sure that they are there on the road. We also want to train them to enhance road safety. What we have realized is that the previous training has focused predominantly on speed and in particular, you'd find that's why people are complaining about traffic officers hiding behind bridges and wanting to catch those who are speeding. There are quite a number of areas that we need to focus on. The moving violations, for example. The number of people that actually even cross the freeways now that we've got so many freeways in South Africa. 
that they cross the freeways at wrong places. The young people, and especially those of our people who are connected, who use their cell phones whilst driving, for example, people texting and driving, those who are on Twitter, they would even tweet that they are driving past something, indicating that they are literally violating the rules of the road. So from the side of law enforcement, it is to increase, increase the cadership, but also to increase visibility, to make sure that we've got more resources for our traffic officers on, on the roads and to make sure that they are nationally available because the footprint is actually thinly spread. But we also want to make sure that we educate our people from basic education up to ensuring that when our children get to university, they already know matters or tertiary, they know anything related to, to, to road safety. So we want and we're working together with basic education department to make sure that as part of life orientation, we inculcate the, 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 the road safety. But also we're looking at the third E, which is the engineering aspect. Engineering, the way in which constru we construct our roads, making sure that we deal with challenges where we've got potholes and, and uh, where our roads are in a bad shape, like for example, we've got more than 750,000 kilometers of roads in this country, and only 10% of those roads are actually in, 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 in good uh, and very good order. And if you look at 10% vis-a-vis the size of South Africa, you really get worried to say, how long will it take us to get to a point where, where all our roads are engineered to enhance road safety? You would know that this decade of road safety, we need to be reporting into the UN next year. And we need to be knowing what is it that society broadly is doing. The Deputy Minister is speaking about behavioral change, speaking about attitude change. The one thing in South Africa that we have a problem with is attitude. There are people who literally drink and get behind the steering wheel and drive. And we want to make sure that we work together with the health department to remove the stipulation that says you can have two glasses and go and drive. Why should we legally allow people to go and drive? Because it is wrong for anybody to take a substance that alters your behavior, that alters your mindset, and then go behind a steering wheel and be able to, 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 to concentrate on the road. So we're saying dealing with drunk and driving but also dealing with unroadworthy vehicles. The Road Traffic Management Corporation does have statistics on the number of vehicles on our road that are not roadworthy, including those vehicles that are transporting our children to schools every day and uh, 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 morning and afternoon. So these are the areas that we also believe we need to focus on. Working together with the taxi industry, there's a program called uh, Clocomela, and we believe we could also uh, support them with the taxi academy so that we can train the taxi drivers and make them to be those agents for change to make it possible that they drive safely, they drive as, 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 as licensed people, but also they drive road with vehicles. They don't just take a vehicle from an operator and make money for the operator without considering the people who actually are using those taxis. You, you mentioned the taxis and the last time we spoke um, I raised it again and just driving to this venue this morning, we arrive at a traffic light and, you know, it's going to be red for 30 seconds, but this was just too much for him. He veers off the road, goes round to the other side of the intersection, comes back in. Now, he's got a license, therefore he knows that that kind of behavior is out of order. But they do it because they know they can get away with it. I, I can count the number of taxis on one hand that wait for the traffic light to go green before they take off. How do we change this? Because it is predictable behavior. When we arrive at a, see a taxi, um, we already take caution because we don't know what they're going to do next. What, how do we deal with this? The taxi driver of South Africa is part of this society that we need to work together with mm. to change behavior and attitude. Mm. It, it is this hardened attitude that we need to deal with mm. because they believe, and, and in fact, sometimes we must also be honest, the, the, the passengers are the ones that actually at times encourage 
the taxi drivers to behave in the way they, they behave. They scream at them, I'm late, I'm dead, and I'm that, and all those things create a situation where the taxi drivers also believe that if my bosses who are my passengers are saying I must do it, they will do it. And they create a situation where we've got drivers that are very impatient, that are rude, and that is why we believe that working together with the taxi industry, we would be able to change their attitude. Mm. But they need to be retrained and reoriented to make sure that they understand that the people who are in their minibuses are their customers. They are paying their salaries. And the operators must also know that they cannot give their vehicle an un road with a vehicle mm -hmm. to a taxi driver and expect him or her mm -hmm. to make money for them. So it is important that we also mm -hmm. look at professionalizing the taxi uh, industry so that the drivers can have rights. They can have be a, a, an, an ability to negotiate their arrangements mm -hmm. with the operators. And it, that is why we're working together. And I, the president of Santaco is here and, and other role players. They can speak more about what we're mm -hmm. doing together. But remember, when government introduced the taxi recap, the recapitalization was not only on the vehicle, but also on the behavior of the taxi drivers and operators. Mm. And it would take us a little bit of time and patience, mm. but we are working on it and we believe we are turning the corner. Mm. You have already seen some of the taxi drivers who themselves have been catalysts for change, who have intervened mm. in the lives of many people. There's a taxi driver who actually delivered a baby. There's a taxi driver who intervened mm -hmm. and encouraged and motivated and counseled a, 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 a passenger and encouraged this young man mm -hmm. to study and make sure that he doesn't get involved in drugs. If we can massify those times, mm -hmm. we will be able to make sure that All we right. change this behavior. Okay, um, I want to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, though, I'd like to hear from, uh, is it Tlogomela Taxi Care, just to hear what kind of gains that have been. Duncan, I think you're here. We'll come to you, we'll just get a, a, get a sense of uh, the kind of progress that's being made uh, with your program and see if, if there is uh, a softening of attitudes uh, uh, with, with our drivers. So we'll get back to you and also start getting your questions as well. And uh, we'll talk about all the other issues that relate to transport and all of that is coming up after this break. Stay with us.